Hi everybody, Steve Farmer here. It's been quite some time since I brought you a video. I had done a video on a Smith Mora that was very, very interesting and it was very complex and it took me about three hours to analyze all the lines because it was a new line for black in the Smith Mora with an early E5 and I found a refutation to it real quickly. But then my computer locked up and would not come back to life. So I had to get a new computer. So I'm now on an 8 core processor computer that really kicks butt. Here we are. We have the FIDE Grand Prix going on. And we're going to look at a game from round 3 between Vasily Ivanchuk playing white and Lanier Dominguez Perez playing black. This is from round 3. And this could have been Chucky's Immortal. He opens up with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. Typical Grunfeld exchange variation. Very common. Nothing to see here. Move along, folks. Castles, rook c1, now queen of a5. Now, c takes d4 is a little more commonplace. And after pawn takes, queen to a5 check, and king to f1. And it's a game. But here, after rook c1, he played queen to a5 first, but this allowed Chucky to get out of the check. And now e6 was played, queen to b3. Now, from what I understand, uh, Perez did do some prep for this game, and that's why he came up with queen to a5. And I'm kind of thinking that's a dubious idea now. I think trading on d4 first is better. Oh, by the way, Greg, if you watch this, stop watching. So I'm going to send you the winner later on. You cannot watch this. So here b6 was played, rook f to d1, and bishop a6. Now I think a4 is a reasonable idea here. Chucky plays knight f4, trade of bishops, and then rook a c8. Now, I think around this time, Chucky might have started chewing up on the clock a bit here because it's, it's time to make a decision. Do you trade on c5? Do you push d5? Do you push e5? What is your plan here? Uh, how about a4 now? You know, a lot of things to think about. So I'm sure he took some time to give this careful consideration, and he played the move d5. And I think this is the best. I think this keeps the position pretty dynamic. Now, Black has a couple choices here. In the game, he plays e takes d5. It was possible also to play knight to e5. I think I would have given this some preference. And now, queen to b3 doesn't look good for white because of c4. So, queen to e2, and rook f e8. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And though the pawns are a bit shattered, there is nothing to fear in this position for Black. I think Black is doing okay. Stands probably equal. But in the game, he didn't want to fracture his pawns, and he played e takes d5. Certainly understandable. Knight takes d5. Rook f e8. And now, Chucky plays bishop f4. Going back a step, I think in light of what is to come, a4 would have been a much better idea to prevent any counterplay by black. But okay, Chucky has his own plans in mind, and he plays bishop f4. And here comes a short sequence of moves that's not hard to figure out. b5, queen takes pawn. Not so much losing the c pawn as gaining the e pawn. Now rook to e1. Uh, Chucky plays this so that he can avoid black playing rook to c4, which would increase the pressure on the pawn on c3. So uh, the idea is after rook e1, if he now goes rook to c4, which he did not play in the game, we get queen to e3. And now the queen comes to a3 because of the pressure that's starting to mount on the back rank. Now bishop h6 anyway. And I think this trade of this bishop on g7 is favorable for white. For example, if king to h8, rook cd1. And after bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, I think that white has a slight pull here. And if he tries to take the pawn, I think that's a major mistake. 
because white would win the house after queen to e8. And the problem here is if he takes the queen, then we take, and then we mate. And if queen to f8, then we just simply have bishop takes queen, rook takes queen, rook takes rook, h5, and now knight takes c3. And this knight is immune because of the discovered check. The bishop would come to b4, checking the king with the rook, and grabbing whatever piece takes the knight on c3, if it did. Definitely winning for white. But here, in the best case scenario, I think white just has a slight pull. So, after rook to e1, Perez avoided that and plays rook takes rook check. Rook takes, and now h6. Okay, I've pretty much glossed over the opening moves so far, but now it's starting to get a bit complicated here. White seems to have the initiative, but nothing has really popped up in his gun sights yet. There's no way to immediately break through. However, one problem that black does have is his queen is sitting on a5, pretty much out of play. So this is one reason why I have to condemn the early move of queen a5 without trading on d4 first. Remember I mentioned that black could have traded on d4 and then played queen a5 with tempo by giving check. Here that didn't happen. And so the queen is sitting on a5 and black's kind of like a tempo down because of this. Now here I thought Chucky would play bishop c7. He didn't. Things are getting complicated and I'm sure he was chewing up the clock here. And he played h4. At first I didn't understand this move. It starts to make sense as we delve into the game a little bit further. The idea is he doesn't want to calculate a whole lot of variations where at the end he has to worry about a back rank mate. So he creates left for the king. So why not just play h3? Well, h4 has the idea that it's going to help protect the bishop on two main diagonals. The c1, h6 diagonal as well as the h2, c7 diagonal. Both are important. The bishop's not sure where it's going to go right at this point. So h4 will cost black a pawn if he wants to play g5 to try and dislodge it in one way or another. So it makes sense there. It's a more offensive post for the pawn, and it creates left. So now that I look at it after the game's been finished, I do kind of like this move. And now king to h8 was played. And this is the first of many mistakes we're going to see in this game. If we go back, I think that Perez had a better shot with queen takes a2, queen takes b5, a6, queen to d3, rook to d8, and c4. Now, I have good feelings about white's position, but objectively, it's pretty level. He's got the outside pass pawn, which later in the game could be a real headache for white. And he's got that bishop on a very nice diagonal that helps that pawn come up the board. But for the middle game part, I feel more comfortable with white. So it's an open game. But Perez didn't play that. He played king to h8. Now, this removes the king from the threatened fork, or eventual threatened fork, of knight to e7 and taking on c8. Now, bishop c7 was played, and this is a very good move, and I think white has a good, good advantage after this. Perez feels his queen is off sides and tries to bring her back into the game in some way with queen to a6. And after this, white's advantage builds a little more. Probably on the verge of winning here. Let's step back. The computer, it likes rook to c7 as the best plan for black, and we'll look into this a little bit here. But it's a very hard move for a human to make because he just moved his king to avoid the, the loss of the exchange at some point. So no human's going to play this move. But here white will proceed with rook to e8 check, king to h7. And now not knight takes c7, though that looks like the best move. The best move is actually queen to d6. Let's go back here. And let's look at taking the rook. And after queen takes c7, queen takes pawn, it's a trade of a rook and a pawn for two minors. And after knight to e5, 
I actually like black's position a little more. And the computer agrees with that. So, queen to d6 is a much better move. And now, where is the rook going to go? If he loses a rook on c7 now, it's not going to be a trade of two minors for a rook and a pawn. But he has a cute little move, a rook to e7. Knight takes. Knight takes. Rook takes. Now queen takes a2. And there's some sort of compensation here. Uh, probably not enough, but he's got a piece in the pawn for the rook. I would still much rather have white, but it would make the win very difficult for white, especially if your opponent's in time pressure. All right, let's go back to the game where Perez plays queen to a6. A uh, perfectly natural human move to make. And now queen to d6. Chucky follows the correct path. He doesn't want to exchange queens if he can. He wants to start bringing his pieces into the king side. And we can kind of see here how black is faced with the difficulty of having his forces divided. So with that in mind, Perez tries knight to b8. He wants to trade queens, and he'd like to untangle his pieces so that he no longer is outnumbered on the king side. Chucky plays very well here. He plays queen to f4. You don't want to trade queens. You have the initiative. So whenever you have the initiative or the attack, you do not want to trade queens, definitely. But I don't think this is how Perez envisioned the game going. Let's step back. If you look at this, you got to think to yourself, well, doesn't bishop takes knight just win a piece? I think that's what Perez was looking at. And let's take a look. Bishop takes knight. Queen takes queen. Bishop takes... But there's a trick at the end. Rook to d8 is going to regain one of the pieces. And this is a pretty level position here. But it's wishful thinking. And the KG veteran avoided it by playing queen to f4. And now Perez plays queen to c6. And this must have been the backup position that he had in his mind to go after if white didn't take the knight on b8. Now, Chucky plays queen takes f7. He has one a pawn, and he has a good chance to win the game here. But, he missed a prime opportunity here. I mean, can you blame him? He wins a pawn. He's up against a 27-23 player, you know? Get a pawn against a guy like that, you're good as gold, right? Well, <laughs> you really can't blame him. You know, there's a reason a Mona Lisa is behind glass. It's so that you don't make a classic piece of work and then draw all over it with crayons. Chucky really needed to take his time at this point and find the best move. And so I will leave that up to you right now, dear viewers. Please pause the video. Find a move that is not just the strongest move for White. It's such a solid punch that it knocks out all his teeth, gives him two black eyes, and a raging hematoma right in the forehead. See what you can come up with. Okay, hopefully you've had time to look at this and first ruled out bishop takes b8 because queen takes d5 just leads to nothing. So the idea of black moving the queen to c6 is hitting the knight, which is protecting the bishop on c7. So how do you get out of this? You know, bishop takes b8 looks like the only way, or queen takes f7 as Chucky played. But there's actually a more powerful move. If you need more time on this, because it's not an easy move to find, go ahead and pause the video again. For those of you who are curious, I'm going to move on now. And the move is bishop to e5. Wow. This is a very beautiful move. Okay. The first thing that we need to spot is why can he not just take the knight? Queen takes knight. Do you see it? Queen takes h6. 
comes with check and the bishop is pinned. Perhaps even check was looking at this and for some reason had the pawn still back on h7 in his mind. But being on h6 makes all the difference in the world. Because after king g8, this is checkmate. So no, you can't take the horsey. What else is there? Well, we are always taught to look at checks, captures, and forced moves. Well, they're all forced in this position, so let's look at the captures now. And what about bishop takes e5? Well, this meets a quick demise. If he goes to g8, it's going to be knight to e7, forking everything. If he goes f6, knight takes f6. And this will lead to mate. So he can't take the bishop. How about blocking with f6? Well, now we have bishop takes f6, and the threat of queen takes h6 is still on. So some choices here. Bishop takes f6. Now knight takes f6, threatens mate in one. Now if king to g7, rook to e7, and if king h8, this is mate. And if king to f8, then knight d5, discovered check, and we get mate in a couple moves. So g5 looks like the move. Well, white just goes forward relentlessly, threatening mate in one. And now, if rook to c7, we get queen to g6. We're threatening mate on g8, and queen takes h6, followed by queen takes h7 with mate. So rook to g7, we check, and then we mate. Okay. So g5, queen f5. Is there any other defense for black? He can try queen to b7, feeling that the queen on g7 will be a better defender, but we still get this, and again, the mate threat. So queen to g7. Now we go rook to e8. And after rook takes, queen takes, queen to g8, only move, and then mate. So that doesn't work either. So g5 doesn't work here. And king to g7. Now the rook comes in. And if king to h8, then rook mates on h7. Pretty little mate. And if king f8, then knight d5 check. King g8, queen checks, and then mates. So those don't work. All right, so that was on bishop takes f6 here. The only way to get out of this is with queen takes f6, and the idea is that we're going to pin the knight after this move with rook to f8, but after rook to e8, it's a very easy win for white. So let's go back a bit. So after bishop to e5, we were just looking at f6. What else is there? Well, there's king moves. Let's look at king moves. If king to h7, we have queen takes f7, Rook to c7, and bishop takes c7. And white is up a rook and a pawn. So king to h7 doesn't work. How about king to g8? Well, now we get this family fork. And we can even trade material to make it easier. And bazinga, up a full queen. It's amazing that we're finding that black is pretty helpless in this position. All right, what else is there? We looked at bishop takes bishop. We looked at queen takes knight. We looked at the king moves. We looked at f6, uh, g5. Let's see what happens here. Queen takes f7 again. And now we're threatening mate on g7. And trading the bishop here is going to allow rook takes, and then rook's going to come to e7 infiltrating with effect. So rook to g8 looks logical. Knight to e7 and then queen to e8. The idea is to try and trade the queens and survive in some manner. But what do you do when you have the attack and your opponent wants to trade queens? You say, no way, Jose, and you head away from the trade. Queen to e6. It's a wonderful way to keep the pressure on. 
queen takes h6 is still a threat. So, king to h7. Now, can you spot the mate in four? Yeah, it's pretty much child's play from this point. Queen to f5, check. And now, king to h8. I mean, you could interpose with the queen if you wanted, I suppose, but king goes back, knight to g6. And now, if king to h7, we have knight checks, double check, king goes back and mate. So he has to give up the queen after all. And after queen takes g6, it's mate on the next move, no matter what he does. Knight to d7, queen takes pawn as mate. Rook f8, queen takes g7, mate. Bishop takes e5, queen takes h6, is still mate. Yeah, so, surprisingly, after this move, bishop to e5, black is fully and completely lost. A beautiful move, and too bad that Ivanchuk didn't have time to find this move. If he had, I'm sure this would have been like an immortal game for him, or at least one of his top ten. It's a beautiful game up to this point. Instead, he played queen takes pawn, going up a pawn, and now rook f8, and queen to e6. The problem for Chucky is the clock keeps ticking, ticking, ticking. But it must have been ticking for his opponent, too, because he plays king to h7, and this is just losing. He should have traded queens. He had the opportunity. And now g5, trade the pawns, bishop to e5, and now knight to d7. I think that white is clearly better here, probably winning with most accurate play, but with the clocks involved, it leaves the door open for black to save the game. Instead of trading queens, though, king to h7. And now Chucky senses blood in the water and plays with some accuracy here. Bishop to d6. Rook to d8. And now knight f6 check. Now, king to h8. Well, first of all, let's look at if he plays bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, the rook's going to come in with great effect. Can't allow that. So he plays king to h8. All right, quiz time once again. Find the best move for white here. What should white play to close out the game? Okay, hopefully you paused the video and you found a move that even Chuck played. He played knight to e8. This is just deadly. The only defender that black has near his king is that bishop on g7. Once that's gone, his position should really, in theory, fall apart like a house of cards. Now, Perez plays queen takes c3. Let's step back. If he tries to get rid of the knight rather than lose his bishop, then after queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, king h7, rook takes b8 is easy peasy Japanesey. White wins easily, being a full rook up. That's why Perez played queen takes c3. And now Chucky blows it. <laughs> if you were playing white, what would you play here? Find the move that will win the game for white. Okay, I kind of gave you a clue a bit ago. So, you should have come up with knight takes g7. That is not what Chucky played. He played bishop to c7. And this gets him in some hot water, as we'll see in a moment. But after knight takes g7, he has some choices here. The best is probably rook takes d6. But if he goes king takes g7, queen to e7, king moves back, take the rook, king goes up, rook to e7, queen g7, and bishop e5, and mate is coming soon. If he goes queen takes g7, well then bishop to e5, and owie mommy, that queen is pinned and lost. So rook takes d6 would have to be tried. And after queen checks, king to h7, 
If he takes a knight, we really see a true purpose of the pawn being on h4. King takes a knight, rook to e7, king to f6, and queen to f7 is checkmate. Thanks to that pawn on h4. So don't take the knight. Now what do you do? Another beautiful move. Knight to h5. And the point here is if he takes the knight, well, this is not pretty. It's going to be an easy win. So queen takes rook. Queen takes queen. Pawn takes knight. And he's got a knight and a rook for the queen, but not for long. Queen to e7. King moves and take the rook. And the knight. And the pawn. Okay, so even the best move, rook takes d6, doesn't work. But he didn't see that. You know, he's at move 31 here, and time is getting short. He played bishop c7, rook c8. Okay, chess quiz fans, one more time. Find the best move for white. What would you play if you were playing white? Well, in the game, Ivanchuk played queen takes c8. And I'll tell you, that's not the move. So come up with something else. Resume the video when you're ready. Okay. Again, the move is knight takes g7. Get rid of the kingside defender. This seems like a simple axiom to most people, even the grandmasters. <laughs> they understand it too. But I don't know what got into even Chuck's head that he had something else. And, you know, he does maintain an edge after his move. Not much of one. This one wins. Now, if he plays rook takes c7, which seems like the most logical shot, then we got knight to e8. Rook to b7, keeping lateral defense on the second rank. Knight to f6. This threatens mate on g8. There's only one way to stop it. Rook to g7 is totally ineffective because of check. And that's mate. So he has to play queen to c4. And now what do you do? Well, you block it. You're going to try and infiltrate with your rook and queen while blocking out the opposing queen. And you're threatening to come in on e8 and f6. So again, there is only one move for black. Queen to c6 stops both those threats. And now queen to e5 check. So the question is, where does he move his king? To h7 or g8? Or does he block with the rook? We just take the knight on b8 and win. So he's really only got king moves. So let's look at king to h7 first. Now the knight and the queen are a terrible duo to face when you're trying to hold a position together. Knight f6. Now queen takes f6 would of course delay mate, but that's all it would do is delay it. Now king to h8 or g7 doesn't really matter much which because we're going to go here with check. And if king to g8, queen checks. And then rook to e7 is mate. Or king to h7, queen e7. And we go here and mate. So going to h7 doesn't do anything. If king goes to g8, then we get knight e7. We're forking. He has to take... And now we're threatening to win the knight on b8 through a series of checks. Um, one thing we're threatening here as well is queen to d8 and then rook to e7, forcing a mating net. So queen to d7 is tried, but this is going to lose the knight. Boom. All right, so neither king g8 or king h7 work, and if neither of those work, then the game is over. So we can see how important it is to remove the defender with knight takes g7. And if he takes with the king, then we get a fork. And if he takes with the queen, we get a pin, winning a decisive material advantage. Okay, so knight takes g7 was missed here. Queen takes c8. 
He's hanging on to the edge by the slightest margins, but he still has chances. All right, so queen takes e1, check. And we can see that his position's a little bit shaky here, but he's got that knight under attack on b8, so that's keeping white with an edge. Bishop checks, bishop takes, queen takes, now g3. King to h7 to get out of any nasty discoveries. Queen checks, king to g8. And now, one last time. I think I told you last time, this was last time. <laughs> but this isn't a crushing advantage. This is a way to keep an advantage. What would you play if you were white? Yeah, I'm sure that you would have found knight to c7. This is at move 37, and I know that Ivan Shuk was very, very low on time. And the point of this is we're attacking the knight on b8, so it has to move. can't be defended in any way. So now we play knight takes pawn. And we picked off a pawn. We got a pawn advantage. And white is looking pretty good. It's going to be a tough battle, but white should probably pull that out, I would think. Instead, Ivanchuk played f4. And I don't know why. He just left his knight on e8, just simply hanging. It's hanging. Now, trying to get to time control... Instead of taking the knight right away, Perez plays check. King goes back, checks again. King to g2, move 39, queen to e2, check. And at this point, I believe that even check overstepped the time limit here at move 39. And I think he did so on purpose because he didn't want to face the fact that his knight's going to be flying off the board on the next move. What a tragedy for Vasily Ivanchuk. He had a great game at his fingertips. It was just there. If he would have found bishop to e5, oh, this would have been all over the, the world in coverage. This is one of those quiet, not-so-obvious moves that just flat-out wins the game with bishop to e5. It was kind of funny because in the post-game interview, they always bring the winner in to talk about the game. And Perez didn't really want to talk about the middle game too much. He focused on the opening part of the game. And I think he came to the conclusion that the trade on d4 first is a necessity. Queen to a5 is not worth anything. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm sorry I haven't posted more often. I look to be doing more videos here in the future now that I got a good computer. And I hope to revive that Smith-Mora game some way, somehow. It was a very interesting game, so I hope to bring that to you as well. All right, folks. Well, until next time, good luck.